anyways, so we're going to go over final picks, bands, everything like that here. Uh, there is, again, a three-minute delay here, so it could take a little while. Anyways, so Blue Team has banned out Akali, Nar, and Morgana. Nar should be perma banned. Always, always ban Nar. Uh, Morgana, a little overrated, but still very annoying to deal with and very strong. Akali is one of those champions where, not necessarily the most popular, but if you're versus a good Akali player, or if it counters your champion, I can totally understand why you might want to ban it. It can be quite overbearing if you're not competent in playing versus it, or you don't trust your team to, let's say, use a sweeper or drop a pink or something like that, or just not fall behind versus her. So, fine bans on that side overall. Uh, in terms of picks, they've gone with a MF Sona bot lane. So that's a heavy, heavy amount of poke in that lane. Um, th their scaling isn't necessarily great on MF, but the, the actual landing phase poke and burst potential that they have between Sona and MF is quite good. The synergy is there, so I, I'm happy with that. Top lane, they're going to be running a Shivana mid lane with a Katarina and a Shaco jungle. Shaco jungle is not something you see that often, but if it's a good Shaco player, they can definitely, definitely make it work. Usually that involves cycle ganking an immobile or, or snowball reliant lane, uh, setting them behind. And then in the mid late game, you either play as an assassin, just trying to one shot or, or zone out the enemy carries, or you go ahead and split push and just make their life hell because you're, you're mobile enough, right? You got the stealth, you got the jump, you got the clone. There's enough in your kit to try and escape from people. That split push actually works out quite well. Uh, although the split push shotgun is something I'm not seeing as much anymore. I'm seeing more assassin, uh, assassin, not assassin, assassin shotguns <laughs> showing up. Oh boy. So then purple team has banned out Zed, Ramus, and Lucian. I understand all those bans. I'll just go over them quickly though. Lucian is king. He is the best AD carry right now as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Tristana is still very powerful, but since the nerfs is not as much of a priority pick ban. Lucian is being nerfed. It will be nerfed next patch. But at the moment, he is still very, very dominant and not very fun to, to play versus. So I understand why a lot of people will want to ban that out, and I agree with it. Ramus, a monster in solo queue, and very, very good at shutting down auto-attacking AD carries, such as Tristana, actually. So uh, I'm assuming that was a target ban just saying, like, I want to play Tristana, I don't want to deal with the Ramus, let's take it out. Uh, and it would also do quite well versus Zin. And uh, also versus Fizz, because, of course, he's so reliant on being able to play full Trickster. If you land a taunt, well, you're not going to be able to do that, and you're going to be burst down quite quickly. Ramus is not, like, the absolute best ban ever, but is still very solid, especially in solo queue. So that's, that's perfectly fine. Zed, he's annoying. He's one of the better AD assassins left and can be very, very frustrating to deal with. So again, I understand why you take it out. I don't necessarily think it's the best ban, but I think it is a strong ban. So we're going to leave it at that. Uh, in terms of picks ban, oh, sorry, not picks ban, picks, they have gone with a Tristana Nami bot lane. Nami is queen, princess, I suppose, of, of, of bot lane supports right now with Janna being very high up there as well as Thresh. Um, Nami works well with Trist because you have that disengage as well as the offensive potential with your E, with your bubble, with your poke. So either you get ahead early and Trist snowballs, or you just sort of stay in lane with your sustain and disengage potential to make sure that she can scale up and become the late game monster she wants to be. So pretty versatile bot lane there. It's popular, it works well. Uh, top lane Garen, not something we see that often. But since the buffs to the passive, I'm actually surprised we don't see it a little bit more often, especially in lower elos, especially as a counter to uh, top lanes who are heavily hurt by silences. But again, I, I understand why not everyone's going to go for it. Uh, let's hit this look. But yeah, so the, the late game Garen sustain is pretty damn strong. And uh, if, if he can not be instantly burst by, let's say, like, Sona, Katarina combo, Shivana combo, like, whatever AoE they're throwing across that, then his sustain and his silence is going to be quite good, and he's going to be able to silence Katarina. So, not the worst pick ever. I definitely could see it working out well for them. That being said, I'm not com uh, competent enough in the garen Shivana matchup to say who has the direct advantage there. Uh, both of them are resourceless. Both of them have good early damage and tankiness. It's going to boil down, I think, mostly to their own personal playstyle and any jungle ganks that are going to show up. Zin jungle, I think there are better picks, but it is strong if you get ahead. I usually expect to see Zin combining with a utility mid, though, uh, such as Orianna, such as Zerath or Lux or anyone along that vein, where you can sort of exemplify Zin's strengths with a shield or with massive slows, stuns, vacuums, something like that to, to make him be able to sustain through and uh, continue outputting his damage. That being said, he'll be fine. Um, 
Fizz versus Katarina, pretty easy, I would say, for Fizz. Fizz has the, the early burst advantage, but of course Katarina has the, the snowball advantage with just like AoE ace resets. Uh, Fizz, though, with the mobility, should be able to avoid Katarina's sustained damage from her alt, and oftentimes that is required in order for, for Katarina to snowball. So I would say it's it's slightly in Fizz's favor in that lane, but it's not like to the point where it's just a one-sided matchup. I, I think that's going to be interesting to watch how they play and how experienced they are with their champions. In terms of overall team fight comps and everything like that, I'm going to give it slightly over to Blue Team, simply because they have the AoE to pull off some really, really good plays. They have the Sona alt into uh, MF alt into Katarina alt. All of those combining on top of each other. Shivana can then peel with her own alt, pushing them back into it or pushing them into the, the sustained damage from those alts is a pretty strong play. Uh, Shaco is then going to be able to try and chase out some, some people and maybe play some cleanup there. That being said, Shaco is the, the odd man in that team comp. He doesn't really fit with it. If they had, let's say, like an Amumu or a Fiddlesticks or... Um, I'm trying to think. Even a Vi. Vi would work too really, really, really well. Just shut down single targets. I think that would make this team comp a little bit better for that. But overall, I would, I would say that they still have a slight advantage. On the split side, purple team is much, much better at stopping fights they don't want and making picks for themselves. A Fizz Alt, a Nami Bubble, a Zin finding any lone target should be setting up free kills for their team. They have a lot of damage there, they have a lot of burst, and uh, they have some pretty good disengage. I, I just think that they're going to be better at picking off, let's say, jungle skirmishes, lone targets, that sort of thing. Someone's asking about Malphite for jungle. Uh, Malphite jungle is a lot weaker than it used to be. I don't see much reason to play Malphite when you could play Vi, Amumu, or, or any of the other sort of CC damage junglers. Malphite is more of a CC tank, and at that point, you have champions like Nautilus, like Sejuani, like um, Zac. All of those champions are usually picked because of their CC and their tankiness over their CC and damage. Whereas Vi, Amumu, and Fiddlesticks are picked for their CC and damage. And uh, if you're talking about an AoE comp like this, they already have tankiness from, from Shivana. I think just a, a medium tankiness jungle with a good amount of CC and some decent damage would probably be better than someone like a, a Malphite. But yes, Malphite would work if that was a preferred jungler. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to keep just a quick eye on this. Uh, starting items, pretty much what I would expect to see. Flask on Fizz, Boots on Katarina, and then just a shit ton of potions. Looks like Shaco is going for his level 2 gank top. Uh, I don't know how well that's going to work, because neither of you have very good CC. Never mind, never mind he's going for the Red Steel. I was going to say, why would you gank a Garen at level 2 when you don't have the CC to pull it off? Instead... Ah, interesting. So he's going to wait for Zin to come through and walk into his traps. He's going to try and trap all around here, and he's going to wait for uh, him to be tanking the Red and this, and then he'll jump in and try and go for the kill. That being said, Zin is taking a little while and is clear. We're going to look back at that in a second. In the meantime... Sona MF actually win the level 2 trade just by a little bit, but don't really get anything off of it. The bubble comes through, does not land, and Nami is now burst quite low. She should be able to stay, sustain up just fine though. Alright, so here goes Zin, tanking a lot of damage, taking a lot from that. What are you doing, Shaco? Oh, okay. Actually, I like that, just continuing to wait, continuing to wait. Let him take as much damage as possible. Uh, let's see how this goes. You should have seen that cloaked. You missed your smite, dude. What are you doing? You should have just gone and killed him. You have ignite. Stealth forward, auto attack, drop trap, auto attack, ignite, auto attack, and like you, you got the kill, dude. I, I don't know why I didn't go for it. It just seemed very, very sloppy from Shaco. You wasted all that time. You missed your smite. You didn't go for the kill. Now you're so far behind, and, and Fizz looks to be trying to catch you. Having said, they don't quite catch him, so he's going to be alright. But he's going to be limping through this clear. I'd like to see Zin now, uh, maybe with Fizz, trying to apply pressure on red buff. And I'm going to pause for a second, and I'm going to explain why. The reason is, you already have double buffs, you're way ahead of Shaco. Shaco's level 2, right? So you don't need to worry about him. Mid is pushed up, and you have a burst mid who has better burst at this level than the enemy mid. 
Bottom lane is shoved up and has better CC and better DPS than the enemy bot lane right now. So you could, if you wished, bring four people around to steal this red and kill. I think that would be a very good play if, it, if you were able to communicate that through to your team and uh, able to set that up. Instead though, Shaco is going to be able to pull himself back into the game here. Uh, he's just going to go through, clear as best he can. Yeah, that's a lot of wasted time and you want to keep punishing him for doing that. And the, the best way to do it would be, again, invade his jungle, shut him down. All right. Nice bubble, actually. They landed a double bubble in bot. Nami, again, taken very low. In terms of potions, yeah, exhaust still up on both. Heal is up on both. So it's really going to boil down to the next fight. Who can land their engage? Who can land their poke? Who can land their burst? What I'd like to see is Nami run forward, bubble, exhaust, Trist, Auto attack, jump forward, auto attack, E auto attack, and that would be your kill, and then you can reset your, your jump with it, the assist or kill. Alright, Zin going in top here. Uses Ghost actually quite early to catch up. Level 3 versus level 5, not able to pick it up. He does get the flash, but does not get the knock up, and Garen is not able to catch up in time. You might have been able to pull that off a little bit easier through two things. Number one, calling the, the fight, calling the gank earlier so that Garen could stick onto the target. Number two, why are you this low level, right? I, I think he should be level, oh, never mind. His experience is like full. He just needed one minion, essentially, to hit level four. I think you should hit level four before you gank, though, dude. Uh, extra damage is uh, pretty damn strong. Uh, you could have even maybe let uh, Shivana shove up a little bit more and then gone for the gank. A lot of damage coming through. Of course, there is no Ignite on Garen, so that kill's not going to happen. Alright, we see a lot of pings coming down from, I can't tell who, but it's someone on purple team onto the Katarina. Chaco coming in top. Shivana not going to be here for this fight. Trap goes down, auto attack goes down. Oh, he is getting pretty damn low. Auto attack, flash, auto attack, there's the first blood. I like you dropping the ward in there. I like you going uh, for, for the extra kill. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. I was going to say that you might have wanted to wait a second on the flash so that you knew your, your auto attack animation was finished and you'd be able to cast it faster, but there was no risk there because Shaco does not have flash and has already used his deceive. There was no risk of him escaping there. I like that play. That was a good job. Uh, he landed the bubble, but that's not going to turn into anything there. That is summoner here, heal blown. Uh, Tristana just struggling through this lane. Uh, it looks like they're going to go back. I'm actually surprised no one paid any attention to this bot lane here. I would have liked to see some ganks coming in and setting these people up because I they have some good damage and CC potential from purple team. Also welcome to the stream there is Sleem and Sprayed Down. Really happy to see you here guys. This is our first workshop game. We would love to do more if you can get yourself or your friends interested. Make sure you're in the chat rooms and we'll see how many people are available for the next game. If not, we're just going to do some some uh, viewer games, see what we can do. All right, so Garen actually went for a Brutalizer first item. I'm not familiar enough with Garen's itemization to really say if that's the perfect choice for him. I'm assuming he's going Black Cleaver and then into tank with items like Sunfire, that sort of thing. And overall, I'm fine with this. Yeah, he's got Black Cleaver itemization. That's pretty much what I'd expect. The thing to remember is that Shivana's early damage is almost all magic damage. All of her skills are magic damage. Uh, her her on hit damage is magic damage. So like, rushing armor, rushing let's say a uh, a Randuin's or a Sunfire Cape or Ninja Tabby, anything like that, is not going to protect you. So, I'm going with Brutalizer. Probably a good choice. I would also, as a second, maybe not second item, but as a second offensive item. I would actually like to see a uh, Hex Drinker on him, because Shivana's going to do a decent amount of magic damage, but mostly I'm concerned with Katarina. If Katarina gets a reset off of him, that's a problem. So it's going to give you damage, magic resist, and it's going to give you that shield to bait out those resets, bait out that, that uh, final burst damage that would cause them to, to snowball. Uh, I'm not saying he should buy early, I'm just saying that it's something he might want to consider as an option, depending on how the various lane goes. Alright, so, a couple things going down bot lane. Um, 
Oh, actually, let's come back and watch that. I'm pretty. It's pretty obvious what happened. Garen's been bullying her for the last little while, but we'll we'll just show off what the combo is here. Uh, obviously, they both have alts. Silence goes through. Tries to put some distance between them, and then just alt. Boom. Obviously, Shivana couldn't alt out earlier because of the silence. Pretty fair. All right. So bot lane, as I was mentioning, they're about to hit level six. This minion wave. So. I want to see if Sona goes for an aggressive, like, flash alt or something like that. The exhaust is there. If they're able to um, do, like, a Q auto attack alt, well MF, auto attack Q alt. Or, no, she'd want auto attack Q auto attack usually, I think. But I haven't seen MF in so long, I'm sorry, guys. But again, I, if they overlay their combos using attack resets, using their CC and burst, they could quite easily lock them down long enough for a kill. A pink ward. I don't like that. Alright, so you never pink ward in a place that you can't defend. You can't, like, you're not pushed out, right? So this pink, you're not going to be able to keep it alive. I would have saved that pink for this bush. Hell, even just throw it on your blue. Make sure that Shackle can't counter jungle. Anything along those lines, I would say, is preferable. Alright, so back in mid lane, pretty much dead even on CS, dead even in experience. It's anyone's game mid here. This landing some decent harass. I also want to point out he is not using his E to engage. Never use your E for engage. E is to either continue chasing, finish the kill, or to escape. There it is. Very, very nice knowing that his damage is going to be enough. The auto attack as well as the burn from his W is enough to finish it after the alt there. Alright, let's, let's rewind that and watch exactly what set that up. Looked like a very nice alt actually. Zin is coming through. Nami only lands onto Sona. Bubble lands onto Sona. Boom, that is a kill. As you can see, the Sona ult just comes across before she dies, and they're able to tag Nami as a result. I think that could have gone slightly better if instead of flashing and trying to set up that fight, Sona just said, okay, screw it, I'm going to ult. As you can see, it's like one auto attack in order to finish off the, the final kill there. I really think that she should have played that a little bit more aggressively. Obviously, you do have to watch out for Tristana. But she had flash, so why wouldn't she, let's say, like, flash to the side of the tidal wave, alt back in, and then play the cleanup, right? I think that would have been better. Oh, god. Okay, that was sloppy. I want to rewatch that and point out some of the mistakes. Okay, so, comes through with a silence. That being said, you can Q and then silence. Sorry, auto attack, then Q for the silence. Uh, use that as an auto attack reset, increase your damage a little bit. You don't have alt, so you're playing this quite risky. At this point though, as Shivani, you have two options, either alt the fuck out, like jump through here, or, as she did there, jump into the wall. I'm assuming she was waiting for her silence to finish. Again, not sure what that flash was supposed to accomplish, I would have saved it. Garen tries to go for the retreat. Both of you actually seem to be resetting your auto attacks. In the end, though, minions do even it out, and they go one for one. It's just sloppy play from both of them, though. Garen could have cleaned it up by walking forward, auto attack Q, jump into your your spinny shit, then uh, just continue chasing with that. Would have had the extra damage finished off. Shivano, as the fight was coming in, could have decided to retreat with her alt. She could have alted earlier for an escape, or she could have used it to try and interrupt one of his, his auto attacks and gain an advantage in that way. Overall, Shivana did all right, but she definitely did uh, misplay a little bit, just in terms of how she was managing her auto attacks and skills. Unfortunately, with a Spectre client, though, it can be somewhat difficult to tell how long the silence is lasting. So I'm, I'm not going to hold that against her. I, I'm more holding it against Garen. I think he could have played that a bit better. Katarina tries to come around, but of course there's wards everywhere from Purple Team. I really want to compliment that. This pink ward has not been cleared for some reason. And then they have the aggressive pink ward up here, one in river, one in try. They have a ton of vision, and I really, really like seeing that. Oh, come on, Fizzy. I just said, you don't use your E to engage, and then he does it. It's like he's trying to make me cry. Not able to interrupt the recall. It's like half a second too late. Alright, we'll rewatch that, but I'm pretty sure we can safely say, Alright, Nami out goes through. Exhaust goes through, Sona has her heal, dumps that across, Exhaust Trist, there it is. Heal goes back across, heal comes across, Trist just kind of stuck in here now that he's wasted his jump. Flashes away a little bit too late, Q goes through, I'm actually surprised that didn't bounce and kill Nami, just slightly off on the angle there. That's unfortunate, but it still worked out, so, so good job there. 
But that's one of the reasons you have to be so careful with Tristana. Doing aggressive jumps like that is going to put you in a dangerous, dangerous position. So definitely watch out for that, Trist. You don't need to win lane. You need to just survive and go even. So taking these risks, doing these ballsy, jumpy, risky plays, I just don't like seeing. I want to see him playing passively and just making sure that he's not going to get shut down. Not a whole lot going on. Tr uh, sorry, not Triss. He is obviously getting a nice advantage at this point. Because of the warding, uh, Katarina is not able, able to get any real roam or advantages for herself. Fizz, as a result, is able to just keep building up his advantage as a 1v1. Mm. Nice escape, but I'm not sure what you're intending to have happen here. My flash wasn't needed. Alright, so your trinket ward was down, so you couldn't jump to that. But, like, even if he slowed you, you could have moved down and jumped to this ward, and then flash, like, over this side if you wanted. I, I just don't think that flash was necessary. It was a little premature. As we can see, there's going to be another kill up top. Garen just having his way with his top lane. Alright, so Smite comes through. Shaco does end up getting this steal. Good job, dude. Alright, we see again coming in bot lane. Nami has her already. Why didn't you leave with all, dude? Oh, Katarina's coming, I suppose that's fair. Yeah, why are you ghosting? That's a lot of weird summoner spell usage. Like, Katarina can't one-shot you, so why ghost, right? I just don't think it's necessary. Alright, just want to just teleport him back up top. A lot of damage going across on Tanami. Instant kill. Again, going too aggressive. They're trying to set up this fight, obviously, bot lane. But in order to do that, you have to lead with CC. Nami, I'm actually going to rewatch that and point out something here. Oh god. Yeah, let's actually fast forward this bit. Just say, am I not just watching this properly? Alright. So, when you're moving forward like this, you can't just walk into their range, right? You're walking into their range, dropping bubbles where they're not going to hit. You have to lead with max max range, right? Whether it's auto attack W and then Q, whether it's throwing just an E on to slow them and then bubbling to retreat, whether it's launching an alt, walking into their range is going to get you burst, and that's what I keep seeing her do. She's going way too close for her champion, so you need to work on just knowing your ranges and making sure that you're not getting yourself caught out. And that seems to be what's happening here. Because once you're in that range, they've already poked you, why not just re-engage and finish the kill, right? Alright, so, blue team going over for the dragon here. Shaco is not present though. Trying to do an objective like this with no jungler is always a risk. Zin is able to come through here. If they're able to land something, like a shark... Alright, so there's the... Not able to land the knockup. E forward, launch fish through. Down in this way? Oh, maybe not. Alright, Trist alts to cancel out Katarina's ult. Uh, Fizz just going through with a lot of damage. I don't know why he didn't use his fish though. You just auto attack ignite and walk away, dude. Hey, you don't need to use anything special here. There's the ignite. Alright, like, where, where's the ult? No. Alright, so the reason I, I'm going to point out, actually. Because this bothers me when I see Fizz's do it. You're coming through. They're coming in from this side, right? So, you have vision. Zin is going on to this target. Alright, you're jumping forward. Alt directly across here. They can't run away. They can't run down or, or in towards their own tri bush. Instead, you go back onto Katarina. He was safe, right? He already ulted, saved himself. Zin was able to re-engage. What you could have done, you would have had the knockup on one of these two, and then you would have been able to Q through for the kill. You had Ignite, you had W. Obviously your E was down, but it would have reset eventually. You would have been able to get these kills, and you were not needed for this fight. So, again, I, I want to see you using your ult in a way that it's pretty much guaranteed to land. 
using these max range, oh, it'll hit if they stay where they are or run towards me alts is a risk. And I, again, I'm not, I'm not just like insulting the guy. I'm just saying like, these are situations where alts could be used better. Again, we're not able to pay much attention to top lane just because it is so one-sided at this point. Uh, Garen just scaling up like a monster. He's got all his components for Sunfire. I'm not sure what he's building the Kindle Gem into. I Could be a Spirit Visage, could be something else. I'm not 100% sure. I was, yeah, yeah, it's probably Spirit Visage because it'll just boost his regen and his regen is crazy now since the buff. Hmm. I think they could have re-engaged and just popped Trist, but that's fine. Alright, this is in lands a knockup. We both stand in the alt, and that's a double kill. Again, you don't need to win the lane, you need to farm. Erg. So yeah, Trist is now down. It's 5-0 on MF. Like, MF is doing work. So good job to her. But what I want to see this purple team bot side doing is stop making risky plays, stop trying to fight, stop trying to duel, and instead say, okay, bot lane is lost. Let's find a way to remain safe in the lane so we can scale up. Because Trist late game is very, very strong, and they have some good disengage and lockdown on their team. Or, or at least it's decent, right? So why not play towards your champion and team comp strengths rather than trying to force small advantages, right? Even if you get a kill, it's a couple hundred gold. Alright, so they're just going to push up mid. I actually like seeing MF rotate up here. She's at her power spike in like a minion here. She's level 11 now. She's got a level 2 alt. She's got Bloodthirster and a BF sword. And like there, there's no one who can stand up to her, right? So send someone with a decent amount of CC up with her. A lot of damage coming through. That's going to be a kill on her. So, I complimented it, but you need to have your team with you for it to work. Panarina tries to go in a little early on the W, so you just wasted that. Alright, she got the Ignite down, but you're not going to get anything here. Jump to a minion, jump to a minion. Yeah, a little late. That's what I was saying, don't chase this, because you're going to get the reset, you already have the Ignite down. Get in a position that, let's say, move up this way, right? Bait them up towards you, then jump down towards the minions to, to cancel out their engage, and then regroup with Sona for the heal, the speed buff. Blah blah blah. The exhaust, as we can see here. Yeah, MF, if let's say she was standing beside Sona, uh, standing behind a anyone who has some decent CC, that would have been a very safe play for MF, right? She's at her s one of her strongest points that she's going to reach in this game. So go with whoever has CC and start pushing advantages elsewhere. Instead, though, just gets cancelled out. Trist, in the meantime, is able to pick up some farm bot lane and picks up tower. So she's pulling herself back into the game here, only down 10 CS. Obviously still down those kills, but this farm is going to help her immensely. Chaco coming through. Are you going to get the jump? <gasps> there it is. Good work, Trist. That's going to help her get back in, definitely. I'm a little surprised that she's gone arm guard, actually. You want your DFG as soon as possible on Katarina so that you can just set up instant kills. And building an arm guard, who's at four, right? Are you switching your focus and now going towards uh, Hourglass? Just because you're worried about Fizz ult? But that, that 1100, 1160 or whatever it is gold is delaying your prime burst, right? To encourage your resets, to encourage your, your dominance in team fights, you're delaying that, right? And it's not helping you in lane. Because, well, it's Fizz, it's armor, right? So I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I would have finished up Source Boots and DFG as fast as possible, even if it means you're going to die. Get the DFG, get your resets, combo with MF, Sona, and just you wombo combo. That's your that's your team comp, right? That's the strength you have to play towards. Instead, they're ignoring their team comp and saying, eh, I'll just try and play safe. When it's actually putting them further behind, I would say. The gold is still pretty even, though. It's like 2k. Uh, someone's asking if there's going to be more workshops after this game. We would love to do more workshops, but we need more people willing to play in the workshops. So if you or your friends are wanting to play, make sure they're in the proper chat rooms. Get them excited, get them advertising, and uh, let's fill this up. I 
lot of damage coming through. Spell comes across from Shaco. Alt's away though. Nami disengage, and they should be pretty safe. I see a flash coming through here. Yeah, that's a kill. Nice work. Alright, so Purple Team actually is playing towards their strengths. I mentioned in the, the pregame and during loading that their main course of action is to skirmish. They want small fights. They want to pick off a lone target and just say, boom, you're dead. And th they're playing towards that. It's working well for them. The question is, are they going to be able to continue scaling up in that way and continue making those fights work for themselves? If Blue Team starts warding a little bit more, if they start playing as, as more of a, a five-man five team rather than just these, these split fights, they could pull themselves back in. Nice, right, so we see four people top lane. I would like to see Shaco go take Dragon. You're not going to be able to stop this dive, right? A little close there, dude. Yeah, don't agree with that. Uh, Fizz missing his ult again. Again, dude, work on those alts. You need those to hit. Shaco taking red instead. Don't agree with that. Because, yeah, ideally they should have been able to hold off 3v4 or 4v4 just by saying, okay, well, this tower's gone. Keep retreating. Use your, your uh, make it rain to slow them down. Uh, just keep pulling back, and they would have been able to defend second tier tower. Uh, in the meantime, Shaco should have been able to solo dragon. Instead, he went for red and is now going for farm. It's not the worst course of action. I mean, he's, he's not done, like, he's not fed or anything, so it would have taken him a while. It might have been slightly risky, but I still think he could have done it. Blue team just pretty much just farming out at this point. Again, they're, they're not super far behind in gold. It has definitely extended in, in purple team's favor now that they're getting some towers, now that they're getting objectives, but it's still only four or 5,000 gold. That is definitely winnable. All right, DFG has been finished up by Katarina here. This is when I want to see you force fights. Sona alt. Uh, MF alt, Shivana alt, Katarina alt. All of those combo perfectly together. They're all similar range, similar duration. Like they, they just work really, really well together in terms of how much area they cover and how how long they last, right? So I, I want to see you pushing towards that advantage. And in the meantime, Shaco can split push, clean up, do what he's got to do to make, make this work for himself. But the other four members of the team need to start communicating together and make this just go in their favor. Yeah, Shaco just baiting them all over the place. Again, though, blue team not going to get any advantage from this. Yes, they're they're wasting time. They're they're making small advantages for themselves, but it's not going to be enough to actually do anything. My God. And you're dead. What? What are you doing, Garen? <laughs> Whatever. They get the flash ignite, but. That, that was odd. Not sure what you were doing, Garen. Use attack move. Come on. You got this. So yeah, Shaco can distract people for a while, but no one's getting an advantage. There's no towers being taken out. There's no fights being picked. There's no, like, they're not baiting for anything. And now again, you're split up. Fizz is going to land an ult, and that's a free kill onto your support. Once your team comp has been broken, right? Sony is integral to making those fights work for yourself then you don't have a chance, right? They cannot fight, they're just having to stall for another 30 or so seconds and pray that they don't lose any more uh, turrets, team members, or gold. All right, um, looks like they're gonna break off the chase here. Yeah, Zin doesn't seem that interested at this point. Mm. Yeah, so Katarina's just gonna go back to base. Should be able to make it, yep. Alright, Tristel just farming up. Uh, at this point, again, 10 CS behind MF, so not falling further behind because MF isn't really making plays anywhere, isn't getting an advantage for herself. And as a result, Trist, who scales better than you, has more utility than you, just is better in every way late game, is staying even or catching up. That's not something you want to see as MF.
Uh, Shaco doing the exact same thing, just getting caught out. Looks like he's going to be able to recall, but like... The, is this split push working out for you? Is it making an advantage? The real That's the real question here, right? Like, Katarina's not here for this combo. If Katarina comes around and they get a good zone all this is the fight. This is the fight that you want. Shaco coming back from base. Oh, uh, Garen going in behind. There's the MF all cancelled a little bit early. Let's rewind and watch that in slow-mo. Looks like... MF still very high health, so no, I don't think this is going to go in your favor. I don't think you're going to be able to finish this off because, well, you're about to die. Fizz is here. Alright, so I'm going to rewind that and point out exactly where things went wrong for them. Ooh, nice cleanup on Chaco. Not convinced Sh Shivana. Yeah, Playful Trickster's coming up right now, so it should be in their favor. Alright. Let's rewind, watch this whole fight. Okay, so, slightly out of position here. Katarina is not with your group. You want Shivana in front, the three of you stacked directly behind. You also need to, like, you have a ward here, so that's good. But you know Garen's coming in, right? So back the hell out. Instead, Katarina walks towards Bush and gets engaged on. So, that's Katarina at, like, half health. You're now trying desperately to peel for them. Shivana eats the Fizz Alt, so that's really, really good. Sona is not in range now to land an alt across these three. These are the three that they need to land the alt across. They get a lot of damage from MF, so MF plays this quite well, actually. But at the end of the day, Zin is eh, just not, not going to work out well. Alright, so Sona is still here. MF landing as much damage as she can. Her heal is used. No one is on the carries. They're all having to deal with Garen because Garen is a monster at this point. Sona obviously split off from the team because of the Zin split. And Shaco is still not here. Again, doesn't have... Well, he does have his boots mobility. Seems to take a while to get here. Weird. Regardless, uh, I do like the cleanup he gets on, on Zin, but it's not going to be enough to win this fight. Alright, also MF, you want to auto-attack before you Q. Alright, so there's the, the quick combo from, from Shaco. He cancels your your auto attack a few times there, MF. As a result, Fizz is then still in range, able to clean that up. Shaco runs away instead of helping. Shaco, you should have stayed and gone on to Trist. Trist is low health, does not have alt. You're full health, have your alt. You could have won this fight for them. And now uh, Trist flashes forward, lands is slow. And Fizz is able to just jump in and clean up. So, three issues that I noticed there. Number one, you split from your team, right? You need to maintain proper front line, make sure that you're peeling properly, and setting up your combo. Issue number two, MF, you cancelled pretty much all of your auto attacks. You didn't use your auto attack reset on your Q. You need to auto attack, then Q, then auto attack. It's like half your damage that way, right? Third issue, Shaco did not join the fight onto uh, Triss. Looks like he is going to pick it up here, but like this is way later than it needed to happen. You would have been able to combo on him while he was still here. Shivana may not have lived, but at least you would have cancelled it out and made the fight go pretty much even, right? I suppose that the extra issue just being that like Sona wasn't able to get in a position that she could land a three-man alt. If she was able to, the find their favor, but I don't see that fight happening, right? It was just a little too far gone. The, Garen was already in, in behind them at that point. So that's not a complaint against her. It's just like, you know, if you could land a perfect alt on everyone, you would have won. Well, that's obvious, right? That's not really helpful. So I'll try and avoid that. Uh, they are pushing back in mid. Again, they're doing the three, four man push, which is what I want to see. But Sona is not there. Her alt is coming up right now. There's the exhaust, 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 exhaust. Dude, you want this fight. You want this fight. You want this fight. No, nope, you waited too long. Katarina goes in, immediately gets knocked back and knocked up, taking a lot of damage inside this tower. Again, Sona never did land the exhaust, never did land the alt. Not going to work out well for you. So I'm going to point out exactly where that combo should have gone. Okay, so you see Zin jumping in. Exhaust right here. Exhaust right here. That's your re-engage. Exhaust, Q, auto attack, jump forward, W, E, then alt onto, onto uh, Tristana. You waited too long, you got pushed back. And uh, because he hit so many targets with it, 
Kazim gained a massive amount of armor and magic resist. Because each target he hits, he gets 20 armor and MR, right? So he just gained like, what, 60? 80? I don't know, he hit 3 or 4 targets. It is a nice ult from MF, but it's not going to be able to get yourself any advantage. So, well no one died, and okay, there's the flash ult, so good pick up there, but that was a sloppy fight. It could have gone so much better. Alright, MF, you need to be playing more passive. The Sona ult has been used. Back out, back out. Auto attack as you're doing so, if possible, though. Activate your W, auto attack Q, auto, again, just maintaining max range. He does not have a gap closer. Move between each of your auto attacks, please. Uh, you need to work on your orb walking. Katarina is in range, but alt is still 8 seconds, because obviously she did not get any resets. MF taking just so much damage from this beastly... BEASTLY... Uh, Garen. Not Graves. Garen. Alright. So, Shimana tries to cancel him out with his alt. Not gonna happen, though. And so that is... 3 for 0. Or 3 for 1 if you really want to count Zin still. And there's the 4 for 0. Not good. That is just unfortunate. So yeah, Garen has gotten to the point where he's just going to be a monster. You can't really peel him, you can't really kill him. So he's just a giant meat shield, right? Combine that with his silence and the, the spinny damage with black cleaver armor reduction, and you got some problems. Hmm, they even get Katarina in the end. So at the end of the day, that is a 5 for 0. Very nice advantage from Purple Team. I want to see them pushing that advantage with Dragon and Baron coverage, and of course, baiting the fight or just taking the objective. Any of those is a good idea here. They're so far ahead at this point. I, again, the gold is still pr relatively even, but the gold is on people who need it. Like, it's a 12-0 Fizz, right? He is dominant. So, I want to see them forcing fights. So obviously Dragon has been taken down by Zen. I want to see this Baron Forest, right? Like, you got so much gold on these characters. You got so much burst that any fight that is properly warded and is executed in a, in a decent way is just, it's a win, it's a win. Instead, you're sending two people bots that's giving them a hope for a Desperation Baron. Um, looks like they are responding though, and Blue Team has not rushed it. Hmm, let's see what they go for here. Zin stays bot. Of course, he's a jungler, right? So, not gonna be able to smite steal this. Their only hope is a team fight. Katarina lands a really good combo, but is not able to land the kill. Uh, she doesn't have her hourglass, doesn't have enough gold to really one shot anyone. So, as a result, they do get Baron, but Katarina is taken down. They need to recall as fast as possible and start defending their inhib, because if not, Zin and Garen are just a monstrous pushing force right here. There's the teleport. So, Shivana getting down there. Shivana can't deal with either of them, let alone both of them. Hmm, let's rewind that. I didn't realize they were going to keep chasing. Oh, yeah. Actually, I, I agree with this, right? They're, they're pretty low. So, Shaco runs. There's the ward. He gets taken down immediately, but like, he gets a kill. Not bad. Sona, why are you there? You don't, your carries aren't here? So, using your alt and trying to join a fight is not going to work out for you. You need to pay attention to how fights are going to go, right? And uh, respond accordingly. So that, that was a very poor decision to rejoin this. You needed to go back to base. If Shaco wants to go and assassinate someone, whether it's trading himself out for it or not, you have to just sort of accept that and move on. Alright, so Baron's still up on Shivana and MF. I'd expect her to take red buff here. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to see what, what they're going to want to do. Trivana still hasn't really finished up any items, right? Her Blade of the Rune King isn't finished, her Randuance isn't quite finished, her Spirit Visage isn't finished. It's just a lot of stat items right now. Uh, Shaco, similar idea. He's got damage but no defense, so he's going to want to build up like a uh, Banshee's Veil probably. He's going to want to cancel out some of these engages that are keeping him locked down. Um, or he could go Guardian Angel. Either of the two would be fine. 
Uh, Katarina needs to finish up her hourglass. Again, there, there's just so many item breakpoints that just aren't happening for Purple Team because they are behind. And it's like, oh, well, if you had hourglass, you might be able to do a fight. Yeah, but if you had hourglass, you wouldn't be behind in gold, right? Not working out well for them. MF has finished up her Infinity Edge. She doesn't have her Last Whisper yet, so that's the next big breakpoint for her. There is some armor definitely being stacked up on the enemy team at this point. All right, so Shivana eats the MF. Ooh. Sorry, eats the, the Zigzal. MF ults directly across it. Sona comes across. A lot of damage. They do pick up Zin almost immediately. Sona trying to go for the Fizz. MF coming through. Lends a lot of damage on, but the kill ends up going over to Shivana. So that actually ends up going two for zero. Very nice engage. I really like that fight. Again, Shivana has beefed up. She's to the point where she can tank this quite well. Might not be as tanky as Garen, but she's a good front line. Uh, the reposition by MF followed by the alt. Perfectly executed. Sona alt landed across them this time. Really, really good job. Alright, so that is uh, alt use. <laughs> Oh no, Katarina gets silenced, not able to follow in, immediately gets alt by Garen, and that is a kill. At this point, you don't have anyone left to really peel, right? Like, Shaco's gonna try and go in, but I don't see him being able to pick this up. Fizzle comes across, does not connect, MF just fancy footing her way out. Uh, looks like they are gonna be able to escape this. Shaco really wants to go back in, though. Poor guy. Alright, so Fizz flashes forward, Q's in, heal goes across from MF, and they are able to disengage. Without having alt or DF... well, he did have DFG. I'm surprised he didn't flash DFG, Q, E forward, and of course it would ignite in there. He would have been able to get the kill. It was just poorly executed combo. MF doing much better at just uh, landing her auto attacks. I haven't seen any uh, cancellations yet, so that, that's good. That was my main concern earlier, is just like cancelled auto attacks, not abusing auto attack uh, reset abilities. Chaco able to go for the split push, gets the in hit. Very nice job there. Oh god, the Garen. So fast. Alright, he's got the shock. Okay, nice escape. I'm surprised you didn't jump into Baron Pit. Hmm. Katarina, do you want this? I don't think so. There's the heal and the Trist ult. Trist is just cancelling out every single Katarina play here. Flashes away from the silence. You're not going to get much onto Skaren. Like, he's super, super tanky. You'd be better off re-engaging onto Zin. Looks like they realize that. Shivana tries to re-engage, but not able to land anything. Obviously, it doesn't have any CC. Her ult has already been used. Sona ult, not able to land. That's so unfortunate, because now Trist is in behind your team, and you're split. Oh, this is not good. 15 seconds left on Katarina ult. She really needs that up if she's going to do anything. She's got caught out. Uh, There's the Garen, and uh, he's going to just pop her here. Boom. MF. Oh, good luck, MF. Uh, okay, they actually ignore her for some reason. Alt lands across onto Sona. MF landing as much damage as she can onto... Very nice job. Not able to land the kill. There it is. The alt comes across. I'm not sure why they keep ignoring MF. Yeah, they just won. They definitely just won. Beautiful, beautiful job. As long as they don't immediately kill MF here, they've just won the game. Eww. Oh god, Trist. Okay, right, well, they used themselves pretty much. Nami respawns, but, uh, yeah. I'm gonna rewind a couple. No, not actually. I'll just fast forward because I think this is almost over. I'm indecisive, what can I say? The Winions get both towers, but not going to be able to finish the game. Alright, Shaco trying to come across for a backdoor. They catch him out, though. Now, I want to point out, Purple Team had really, really good ward coverage during the landing phase. Where's their wards gone? Like, they have none. They, this is literally the only ward they have, and they just placed it. That's really what's happening right now. Purple team's not warning, they're getting caught. Blue team is getting a lot of damage out with the MF, and they're just winning as a result. And Shaco gets bursted. In the meantime though, they get the Baron. Very nice job. Just recall, defend your base, right? 
They're not gonna be able to push in. It's only 35 second respawn timer here, so they're gonna be fine. My right, one tower down. Sona has her ult and both summoners up. Looks like she's gone full AP. I would have liked to see a locket, dude. Like, there's a lot of magic damage from the enemy team, and locket's gonna give you CDR and just so much. It's so good. Like, honestly. <laughs> Get a locket, not Lich Bane. I'll go over build to the end again, though, it doesn't matter. No one's taking this farm. A couple pings going down on it, though. Hey, Shaco. Oh, he tries to go for it, and he's bursted. Seriously, dude, stop trying to backdoor. Like, you're just wasting time when you could be team fighting. NF does have her hourglass up. Not hourglass. Blah, 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 blah. She has her guardian angel finished, and that's awesome. She is an angel in my eyes. Yeah, Chaco's so focused on. Oh my god, I have to split push. That he's just died like three times in a row instantly for nothing. I like that work. Good job. Bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. Lance the Silence doesn't really get into anything, though. He is not going to engage. I'm surprised he doesn't have a Lich Bane finished. Interesting. He's gone for all three measly large rod items. <laughs> Alright, a little bit split off from blue team here. Alright, now they regroup nicely. Alright, so here comes Fizz across the sidelines. We're waiting to see if Zin is able to jump in. If Zin jumps in, you got your combo. Mm, no, you're a little split up now. Come on. What did I slow down for? You're not fighting. Alright, well, Blue Team's gonna cycle up to top where they have a very nice minion wave shoving. Um, if they ward jungle as they go, for example, this bush here. And they should be able to set up some fights. Yeah, no, no, no ward for you. Alright, so you're split off again. MF is being engaged on. I mean, all very nicely placed, actually. But the team is not in position to follow up. Like, what are you guys doing? You have no way to carry, you have no mid. Like, you're just not in position. It's a beautiful ult. Just didn't get anything from it. Come on, make my slow-mo worth it here. Let's get some LCS plays. I flashed up the wall, just doesn't want to walk back through this. It's, it's fair, it's not like a complete waste of an alt or anything. Alright, Zin goes in, gets completely bursted down. That's a reset that Katarina needed. Here comes the Fizz ult, again blocked by Shivana. Her bulky ladyhood is really working out well for this team. Blocking all the alts. Katarina, you're... This is like the fifth time I see you do that. It's like she Qs and then Ws. It's like, dude, only W if you're jumping in. Alright, well that's a tower for them. But Zin dead, like, I get that you don't have a Sona ult. But you could definitely engage here. What I wouldn't have minded seeing is, use your W, run forward into their team, flash behind them, and then alt out. Do an insect with Shivana. <laughs> it's just every time I see her right in their face with flash up, and they're all grouped tightly, it's just like, oh, that would be so beautiful right now. In the meantime, though, Shaco gets a split push. Oh my god, dude. You're so focused on this split push. As <laughs> he just, like, halts. Okay. Oh my god. Well, gets in the tower, if nothing else. Sona has exhaust and flash. No alt, though. Hourglass used. Uh I think Fizz is just gonna pop you as soon as, as soon as you jump out. Gets exhausted. Should be able to just E out. Instead seems a little bit focused on this MF. You had flash? Why not just like oh more hourglass, I suppose. This Fizz play is just weird. I'm not gonna go over it all because like there's just too many 
minor, minor things. It's just odd to me. It's like you're jumping in, you're not DFGing, you're not igniting, you're not hourglassing. You're just sort of standing there and then walking back towards them. So yeah, like, jump that, pop onto them. Okay, you missed that, but that's fine. Yeah, it's whatever. You got this. You don't have hourglass now. Drops the alt behind directly onto the MF. Not MF. Come on. Oh my god, guys. I'm so tired and I'm fucking up. Whatever. Good job. Let's just fast forward this. We know they've already won. Yeah, Fizz is just playing in an odd way. It's not bad, it's just I don't quite understand what his thinking is. Oh my god, Shaco. Again? Again? Okay. Good for you. Go get it. Yeah, this is this is the win. Goal! Well, good for them. Okay, so we're gonna go over final item builds and uh, a couple other minor comments. If you guys do want to play the next workshop game, make sure you're in the proper chat rooms to do so. Chat room names are P4NMID, P4NADC, P4NSUP, because support is not working for some reason, P4N Jungle, and P4N, what did I miss? Top. Those are the chat rooms. That's where we're handling all the invites from. Okay, so final item build. Shaco never did get a defensive item, but who cares? He got his full damage and he did his split push. Honestly, though, dude, you played. You had some mistakes in your gameplay. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, you just kept going for that split push. You were so focused on, I want to backdoor them. I want to look cool. I want to backdoor them. Stop, stop trying to show off and instead focus on how you can win games consistently. We're here to offer advice to help you. And just going and saying, I just, no, I, I just want backdoor. I'll just suicide until I actually backdoor successfully. It's not, it's not going to help you, right? So I, I really want to criticize that slightly without attacking you as a player. Um, I also would not have minded seeing something like a guardian angel. You have enough damage, right? If you found a low health target or a squishy target, you were able to kill them, right? So the more damage didn't really help in anything besides backdooring. Whereas the Guardian Angel would have made you safer in team fights, safer, safer in split push, safer in assassinations. It just would have been better, in my opinion. Shivana, your build's pretty much standard. I mean, you're super tanky with a Blade of the Ruin King. That's what Shivana builds. The only thing I'm questioning is what's this dagger for? It could be built into anything, right? So I can't really comment on that. You already have your Blade of the Ruin King. So why are you building more attack speed? It seems unnecessary, and I can't picture what you'd be building it into. Um, like, was it Static Shiv? Was it, um, I, I don't even know, like, what else builds out of it? Wit Wits End uses a recurve bow, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure it's like recurve bow and magic resist item now. Again, I don't play top lane, so, uh, a little bit questioning on the, the dagger. But overall, your build was good. MF, I really liked your build. Um, full damage into Last Whisper into... Well, Guardian Angel, obviously. I'm not sure what the Ruby Crystal was for. I'm assuming Black Cleaver. That you could shred people. I like that build. Good job. That being said, I think you could have gone... Instead of going the Ruby Crystal first, I would have liked to see the uh, Brutalizer first for the CDR and for the Armor Pen. Katarina, you had a really rough time. You weren't able to set up any roam. Your combos were always too early. Um, you need to let someone else engage, and then you follow that up. The, the reason I'm not holding that against you, though, is your teams only engage with Sona. So you didn't have enough lockdown, really, for Katarina to work. Um, also, you're a little bit cocky in lane just in terms of staying, positioning, that sort of thing. You're having a lot of issues with pulling off your basic combo, where like, you'd, throw, you'd throw your Q, you'd W in place, and then you'd E. You just learn your ranges, learn your timings. Uh, there was a lot of times where there was just some, some minor issues like that, where it's like, I'm not going to say you're trash by any means. You played fine, but... If you're going to play Katarina, you can't afford to like miss your W, right? Uh, Sona, I would have liked to see a Locket over a Lich Bane. Locket was, would have really, really helped versus the Fizz Burst, versus, well, really everyone, right? They had some good AoE uh, between Garen, Zin, and like Trist Explosions, blah, blah, blah. So I, I definitely think that Locket would have been a better option over Lich Bane. It worked. 
I also would like to see some better alts. A lot of the alts were either too late, too early, or just missing. So definitely work on those a little bit. Uh, Fizz, you need to work on your alts. That was the main thing I saw. Your build was fine. You played really well. You got super fed, so good job to you. But I would have liked to see you working on your alts. They pretty much only hit Shivana, or they would miss. Whereas just like, just line it up a little better. It's just a little bit of practice, right? N not a huge issue, but those are the main areas I saw that you could improve. Zin, I'm surprised you don't have any damage. Like, did you not build Blade of the Ring King? I'm pretty sure Zin still blade builds either Ghost Blade or Blade of the Ring King, one of those two. Um, I get that you wanted to be tanky, but you already had Garen. The attack speed is going to help you have more sustain, because, like, your passive and shit. Uh, it's going to help you have more CC, because, well, you have to get three Talon, like, three, three auto attacks for your Q, or I think it's his Q, I don't know. Either way, your knockup requires auto attacks. You need the attack speed. And the attack speed could be comboed with an item that's going to help your overall utility. Ghost Blade for CDR, for move speed, for attack speed, for armor pen. You could have gone Blade of the Ring King for more life steal, sticking power. Like, it just would have been better, I think. Overall, your build is fine, though. I would like to see a Randuin's in there. So when you jump in, you could slow everyone around you and then alt them away. Um, bum, 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 bum. Garen, your build? It's fine, yeah. I haven't seen Garen with Frozen Mallet before, but it makes sense. You want the health. I'm fine with it. Your build was really good. You did a very good job of winning lane, being a dominant force in teamfight skirmishes, that sort of thing. So props to you, dude. I didn't notice any large issues besides, like... I think you can just like reset your auto attack a little bit better and maybe communicate with your team a little better. But you did really well, so props, dude. Uh, Trist, you took a lot of risks in lane. I wanted to see you play a little bit more passive once you realized that they were ahead. Uh, that being said, you dominated the late game as I would expect. Your positioning was pretty good. Your overall gameplay was good. So great job. I just want to see you work on your laning phase decision making a little bit more. Uh, I already talked about Fizz. Nami. Your alts were good, but they weren't at a timing when your team could follow up. So work on your map awareness so that you can combo with your team properly. Your combos in lane involved you going into a dangerous position and way closer than you needed to. So I, I really want to see you work on your positioning, managing your range properly, managing your, your bubbles, your alts, making sure they're landing properly. But overall, you, you did fine. I just there, there wasn't too much more that I could notice based on the, how that game was going. Uh, overall, good job there. Thanks for taking...